How's it going? In this video, we are going to watch and react to uh, this video from Mustard called This Insane Helicopter Was the Largest Ever Built, The Mill V12 Story. So, shout out to Mustard. Um, I saw this thumbnail and I was like, oh my god, that is a crazy helicopter. That's like autopilot, dude. How do you fly a helicopter? Well, I'm gonna show you. And as a helicopter pilot and an aviation enthusiast, I thought it, I thought it was appropriate to watch this. So we'll go through and uh, watch it. Yeah. This video was made possible by Curiosity Stream. Watch thousands of high quality documentaries and get access to my streaming service Nebula by using the link in the description. This is the largest American helicopter. Beautiful helicopter. This Korsky CH fifty three. Um, Sea King, Sea Dragon, beautiful, awesome, large helicopter. But back in 1971, this is what the Soviet Union brought to the Paris Air Show. That thing's crazy. So large it baffled observers because it could carry nearly 200 passengers and set world records for lifting power that still stand to this day. But after returning to the Soviet Union, look how big the that thing is. Largest helicopter look at that guy. seemingly disappeared. Now look at this thing. This is crazy because I mean, first off, it doesn't look like a conventional helicopter, obviously. But I mean, it really looks like the fuselage of a large jetliner, a large airplane. Um, and the thing that's also kind of interesting is it looks like it kind of has a rudder on the back, like an airplane, and an elevator, kind of. I don't know if it actually works like that. But then you've got these two wings that kind of look like ailerons on a wing. So, could this thing, if the blades failed, if the propellers failed, could it fly like an airplane? I, I don't think so. I think the wings, I mean, I don't. it's obviously not designed to do that, but... Looks like an airplane and a helicopter mix. It's really interesting and it's freaking massive. In the Soviet Union, the helicopter emerged as an indispensable tool. A machine that could go where no other machine could. Look at that. Lifting people and supplies. Look at the legs. The regions that were once oh my God. inaccessible. And in a country as vast as the Soviet Union, the helicopter would help build a nation. By 1960, the Soviets were building some of the largest and most technically advanced helicopters in the world. Wow. But at the height of the Cold War, the need to build a truly enormous helicopter would become a matter of... So this guy... War, the need to build... This guy right here, he, I think he's not He's not flying the helicopter. He's operating the crane that you'll see in the next shot. So he's on. he's right here, he's underneath, and he is operating this crane but not the pilot. National security. By 1960, American spy planes were beginning to uncover the location of Soviet intercontinental ballistic missiles. For years, the Soviets had been hiding their nuclear missiles by building launch sites deep into the remote wilderness. But the only way to move heavy first generation nuclear missiles was by train, and it meant building a rail line out to each launch site. The Americans soon learned that to find the missile sites, they simply needed to follow the rail lines. Yeah. Keeping nuclear missiles hidden was a matter of national security. It's all funny coming back right now. Uh, today is Oct Wednesday, October 19th, uh, 2022. And uh, nuclear talks and ICBMs have been become more... Uh, those have been talked about recently, so it's all kind of interesting to, to go back and look at what the thought process was back then. So the Soviets devised the bold plan. Instead of using trains or roads, they'd airlift their missiles to remote locations. If helicopters could deploy missiles deep into the remote wilderness, it would be virtually impossible for American spy planes to spot them. Now, what is this thing? So, large helicopter, obviously, but... What is this wing looking thing? I have absolutely no clue. If you guys know, let me know down in the comments below. What is this wing looking thing? Uh, we're 2 minutes and 27 seconds in. But in 1960, even the largest no helicopter in the world was nowhere near powerful enough. 
Look at this dude, and look at this tire. Wow. To lift a 25-ton ballistic missile, the Soviets would need to design a new helicopter with at least twice the lifting power of anything before it. One option was to taste twice the lifting power or of... No, this is just... I'm speaking out loud. So here's the exhaust from the engine. Is this panel... Is this wing-looking thing here just to protect the door exit from the exhaust? So there's a door here, door here. Here's the exhaust. And here you can see the exhaust come out. Maybe it's literally just to prevent the exhaust from going over the person. Is that what that is? If you guys know, let me know down in the comments below. I feel like... You can see it. Maybe that's it's just protecting the people getting in and out. If you know, let me know down down below. Would need to design a new helicopter with at least twice the lifting yeah. power of anything before it. Maybe. One option was to take what was already the largest helicopter in the world and scale it up, enlarging the MI6's fuselage so that it could safely carry a nuclear missile. But a larger helicopter would also require developing a new, more powerful engine and a larger rotor. To save development time, another option was to reuse the engine's rotor and gearbox from the MI6, but to use two sets of them. It was a configuration that had already... So this uh, design system is super popular, very well known, extremely well known by the Chinook. The Chinook has its tandem rotor system. Awesome helicopter. It had been popularized by the Americans, but the approach wouldn't work for Soviet designers. In a tandem configuration, exhaust from the forward set of engines would interfere with airflow to the aft engines. The solution. Interesting. Hmm. The solution would be to arrange the rotors transversely, mounting the assemblies on a set of wings. This would allow engineers to reuse the MI6's rotors, engines, and gearbox entirely to build a truly enormous helicopter. The thing is massive. They would designate the Look at this dude. It's like a freaking jet liner. Prototype as the V12. Airliner. Wow, look at that thing. It's so cool. The enormous machine would end up looking like a half-helicopter, half-airplane, with inversely tapered wings supporting the two rotors. Interesting. Yeah, so there's those two wings. Definitely can't fly on just the wings. I don't think those aerodynamics would work, but... To keep the helicopter stable, the rotor blades would spin in opposite directions, canceling out reaction torque. Mm -hmm. During hover, directional control was achieved by variably tilting each rotor. You can see the leading edge. Never mind. And at higher speeds, the V-12's large tailplane further enhanced maneuverability. Mm, so I, I know this is just a prop, but I don't think this is a rudder or an elevator. Yeah, I don't think that makes sense. Yeah. Operating the giant machine required a crew of six, six. with a pilot, co-pilot, and flight engineer seated in a lower level wow. cockpit, and a navigator, radio operator, and electrical... That's pretty cool. I mean, a split cockpit, six people, pilot, co-pilot, flight engineer, and then navigator, radio operator, and electrical engineer. That's so crazy because, like, <clears throat> as a pilot, as a helicopter pilot in 2022, or an airplane pilot... You are all of these, <laughs> you know, you are all six of these jobs. You wear a lot of hats. Now there are systems and it has gotten a lot easier, but you do all six of these, but that's freaking cool. Split level. It's like a, it's like an airplane, man. That's really cool. Engineer on a second level. The V-12's enormous cargo hold could carry combat material and machinery or could be converted into a civilian transport with seating for up to 196. Wow. 200 people? Look at that. That's like a freaking jet. That is like a freaking jet. Now, the, the biggest question is like, I bet that's kind of like if I was a passenger, I would be sketched out. Like, I'm, I don't know if, even as a helicopter, but I don't know if I could get behind this. It's like, oh my God. Um, but how practical is it? You know, it's like, how fast is this thing going? You could probably, it'd probably be more comfortable and it'd probably way faster in a jet, in, a, in an airplane. So how practical is it? I mean, unless you're trying to, 
rescue people and get them from like a remote location very quickly, but I don't know if it's really that practical. It's passengers. But the V-12's primary role would be to deploy intercontinental ballistic missiles. And the first step would be to load the ICBMs onto cargo planes that would then fly thousands of kilometers to remote landing strips. From there, the missiles would be transferred onto waiting V-12s and airlifted with support crew and equipment to locations hundreds of kilometers into the remote wilderness. With more than 12 million square kilometers of forest across the Soviet Union, American spy planes would be searching for a needle in a haystack. When the V-12 appeared at the 1971 Paris Air Show, it had already broken world records, including lifting an incredible 44 tons of payload up to over 6,000 feet in 1969. That's crazy. That's crazy. That much weight at that high of an altitude is extreme performance. But I mean, it does have four engines. So, I mean, I get it. The equivalent weight of 25 mid-sized cars. Western observers could only speculate as to the V-12's true purpose, but many were expecting hundreds to be pressed into service. Dude. In reality, by 1971, impressing the West was about the only use the Soviets had. Now the question is, this is really like a specific helicopter pilot question, but like, how does this thing auto-rotate? And would you ever need to auto-rotate it because you've got... Two motors per side, so hopefully you still have one operational, but how does this thing auto-rotate? And what's the vortex ring state look like? <sighs> Man. Left for the giant machine. Developing the V-12 had taken the better part of a decade, with design studies beginning in 1959 and the official go-ahead given in 1962. The construction of the first prototype didn't start until 1965 with the first successful test flight occurring three years later. A machine this large comes with compromises, and engineers had to work through new... I think it's beautiful, man. It's a really pretty and cool design. It's just, you know, it makes me nervous how, like, how many moving parts, how wide. I'm sure it's stable, but... the. Uh, just things like it just seems in my eyes like things could bend and move it's a, it's a crazy design numerous challenges around control and stability but the biggest problem was that by 1971 the v12 no longer had a purpose the americans launched the first spy satellite into orbit in 1959 and in a single day it could photograph more soviet territory than all earlier spy plane missions combined Wow. making it far more difficult for the Soviets to hide their ICBMs. And by the 1970s, the Soviets were developing a new generation of ICBMs small enough to fit on trucks, which could evade... And by 2022, they're thinking about launching them again. ...in reconnaissance by simply moving around. The V-12 was just too large and cumbersome to be useful beyond its original mission. There were just too few scenarios that called for lifting 44 tons of cargo or 200 passengers in a single helicopter. Yeah, it's like, it's very cool, very awesome, but definitely not practical. I mean, I just, 200 people or that much cargo, it's like, cool, but like, super not practical, unfortunately. In 1974, development of the V-12 was ended after only two prototypes had been built. With many technical problems still unresolved, the program was cancelled in favor of developing a new heavy lift helicopter with a more conventional single rotor design. That thing still has a lot of blades. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so there's four on this side and four on this side. Wow, eight blades. Man, that's a lot of blades. Soviet engineers weren't afraid to think outside the box. And while the V-12 was still under development, engineers over at the MiG Design Bureau had another crazy idea to turn a MiG-25 into the world's fastest VIP transport, swapping out the MiG's radar and missiles for a passenger cabin. 
You can learn more about this crazy Soviet proposal in my latest video available right now on Nebula. Okay, so I think that's uh, the end of it. All right, so there you go. Uh, from Mustard, uh, this insane helicopter was the largest ever built, the Mill V-12 story. Um, I like I like this comment here. We need that right now to fight wildfires. Imagine carrying 40 tons of water while being able to hover above the hot spots. Now, I'm not a wildland firefighter, but I don't know if they really do that much time just hovering above a fire. But dropping 40 tons of water would be pretty awesome. But, you know, there are those um, commercial jets, like I think like the 737 or the 747, that drop uh, retardant and fuel or retardant and water on wildfires. But, man, that thing is cool. So if you have an answer to what you think those uh, those wings were underneath the exhaust pipes on that one part of the video I paused, let me know down in the comments below. If you found yourself enjoying this video, smash the like button and subscribe for all kinds of helicopter content. And I will see you guys later. Take care.